So welcome to today's Open Borders webinar, which is dedicated to the work of the filmmaker Seral Murmu, and we would like to thank him very warmly for having this conversation with us today. But in many ways, actually, Judith Misrai Barak and I started this conversation in September 2021, and Seral Murmu participated in our AHRC-funded series on page and on stage, celebrating Dalit and Adivasi literatures and performing arts. As part of this series, we organized an author reading with Anjali Kajal and a performance of Kawali by Shaheen at the Nottingham Mella and the New Art Exchange. We also screened three of Seral Murmu's short films, namely Sondaini, Rawa and Remains. And the last two films are still avail available to be watched on NAE's website and we've given you the link and we hope that you had a chance to see those wonderful films in advance. And as an added bonus, and due to popular demand, Seral has kindly allowed us to post a link to a private YouTube channel later on, so that you can also watch Sondaini if you haven't seen it when we screen it live or if you haven't seen it in any other kind of way. So we are very, very excited to be able to continue this conversation with Seral Murmu today as part of the Open Borders webinar series. As you know, this webinar series is organized by Marina Rimsha from the India Indonesia program at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Judith Misrahi Barak from the Research Center Emma at the University Paul Valéry Montpellier III, and the Postcolonial Studies Center at Nottingham Trent University. And this is also funded by the Asia C um, series that I mentioned earlier today. Please be aware that this session is being recorded and we will upload it onto our YouTube channel on page and on stage in a few days time. So today is going to be quite a sort of a relaxed um, conversation with Sarah Murmu. And he, um, we agreed a few questions in advance, but if you want to ask any questions <laughs> after we each ask one of our <sighs> questions, then please feel free to put it in the questions in the chat or just, tell us in the chat that you would like a question and then we will uh, let you do so. In terms of introduction, let me just say a few words about Seral, who is a filmmaker who graduated from the prestigious Film and Television Institute of India, FTDI Pune. His films focus on tribal issues, identity and struggle for equality and against injustice. He sees his films as a means to give strength to the tribal resistance happening in different parts of India. Belonging to the Santal tribe, Seral Murmu was born and brought up in Gachila, a small town near the bank of the river Subarnareka. He started his journey assisting documentary filmmakers while studying as an undergraduate in mass communications at St. Xavier's College, Ranchi. During his work as an assistant, he was able to observe closely how powerful the film medium is. He thus decided to be a filmmaker telling his own stories to the world. Ranchi was the epicenter for tribal activists fighting for tribal rights and justice. He became closely associated with the activists, joining hands with them and making documentaries to give voices to those who are often unheard. He has collaborated as a cameraman and as an editor and made eight documentaries and, all, and short films. His short films Rawa and Sondaini have been screened at national and international film festivals and received numerous awards. He's currently working on a feature length documentary on the history of Santali cinema, and he's assigned to make two documentaries <laughs> or Ramdayal Munda Tribal Research Institute in Ranchi and works on an ongoing project on megaliths of Jharkhand and tribal resistance. He's also deeply interested in tribal folklore, myths, arts, and folk songs, all of which form the basis of his storytelling. And when I just earlier um, re watched Raba, I, I noticed how much I had missed the songs that are part of that short film. So it's, a, it, it's quite obvious if you've seen his films, how important it is to him. So we're very really keen to hear more about his current projects and, and his way of working. And he wanted to start this conversation by talking a little bit about how and why he started making films and where he is now, etc. So over to you, Sirat. Johar, namaste. Uh, my name is Siral. Uh, I'm a filmmaker uh, from Jagan state of India. Uh, I am a filmmaker and now I'm practicing and making uh, documentaries on uh, uh, tribal hi history on uh, 
uh, tribal cultures on uh, and also planning to make a fiction uh, movie maybe a uh, near future what you wanted to talk about you know and in, in when you had that conversation with us last week you wanted to talk a bit more about the santali cultural movement that was started by ragunath murmu and how literature and theater came to be such a prominent role in santali culture so you sort of your broader background to your filmmaking yeah the, well when i myself think about how I, i landed into filmmaking now i can see actually uh there were too many things which were actually you know uh involved uh, in my journey uh to actually land me here in the filmmaking profession uh, firstly i would like to uh, uh acknowledge uh, the work by uh, ragunath murmu and he was born in 19 uh it is uh, he was born in odisha and he traveled all along from jharkhand to west bengal to odisha mobilizing people telling them how important it is to you know uh, learn new culture uh, he pushed uh, gen- generation into writings writing how important it was to document uh, write poetry write uh, uh, theaters plays your own stories and how it is important to you know voice out your uh, opinions and write whatever you want to write and i think that was a, a a seed kind of thing actually you know i can i can you know place it uh, as a uh, if you see, see a flow chart kind of thing how it like uh, he came to our village and many of our elders were very you know uh, though they were not related what they did was they they send the school the next generation to the school and they educate let them you know then they went into school and they somehow you know got into government jobs and we were try able to kind of uh, you know we got this opportunity to go outside of our place and also learn uh, from different cultures and you know write about ourselves and, and we came to know that how important it was to you know uh, you know uh, come back and give back to your society and tell your story i am concerning i'm just talking about my part you know as a filmmaker there are other also who are involved in other cultural activities also other important uh, profession also but as i talk about myself i i can see how you know ragunath murmu and his you know kind of <coughs> journey actually uh, it was an it was an uh, when i talk to my father now and i had told him what was it that you actually uh, you think that is important that you think uh, it it changed your life and he said it was education so it's education and you know somehow he was also he he <clears throat> i'll tell you he is also a very good uh, writer he used to write poetry and all but somehow he was not able to land up there maybe or maybe continue it for a different reason and he used to write stories and i remember in the afternoon uh, i used to read out stories for him and maybe there was this kind of you can say uh, the 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 this uh, pattern of storytelling and story reading what developed inside me and slowly i would go into something like storytelling filmmaking and all and yeah this was a legacy i was telling we we were talking about and how it started and how you know this had this change reaction and 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 in it affected all of us in till my you know generation yeah. and mm-hmm. also i will tell you uh, this also help uh, in other tribes i you won't find uh, uh, jatra or plays or maybe people writing and publishing newspapers and magazines or in santali particularly you can find it very you know actively people are involved in this and this is all because of these people you know uh, who were actively involved into you know uh, writing either they, they were pushing people they were asking people to write anything you want publish and publish and there were small small publishing groups you know uh, in and around jamshedpur who are very actively publishing and people reading uh, whatever stuff they are able to write and you know uh, voice out their opinions their stories uh, 
and these all things you know kind of you know they jumbled and they actually helped me to formulate something you know uh, you, even if you see my films you will see there are many kinds of storytelling you know uh, involved in it there there are certain you know themes from uh, taken from jatra some from what we call singrai is a uh, is a folk uh, storytelling done through songs and all so all those things you know came you know i actually took it from every storytelling that is prominently in you know, a present in my community in santal tribe and this all became a kind of uh, uh, my tools for how to tell stories and i remember uh, also this this contentment of uh, how the tribal people will portrayed you know uh, uh, in cinemas was very problematic mm-hmm. is problematic i won't say was because even now even in ads or maybe movie you can find you know, similar things like the hero heroine lost in forest and suddenly they meet some tribe people and you know the tribe people uh, they have tied up the hero and heroine so that they can eat them they can cook them and eat them huh? that kind of stuff you can easily find it in india in, you know you know it's now people are voicing out and saying that this is not correct and people are actually questioning uh, the media also now it's quite uh, the because the tribal people are also started they started questioning they have all, they all together you have they're doing something like last i remember some uh, people some my tr- friends from tis you know actually wrote a letter open letter to this uh, some uh, uh, comedy show something and they were just you know casually just said something wrong about tribal population tribal tribes and how tribe were close and things like that and you can easily find those you know small small things uh, which are ignored actually which were ignored but yeah even even in bollywood the kind of portrayal the tribals they had was they were you know man eaters savages and kind of things but i i i had this thing that you no know, if you want to be portrayed better i don't think you should be you know kind of uh, expecting it from others who are from not not from your culture and it's important for you to actually come up and tell your own stories so that you can be you know unless until you do it you know it's very tough to actually be honest to your kind of storytelling and what you want to say yeah mm-hmm. um i mean sorry <laughs> i don't want to hog anyone so i don't know other people <laughs> are lined up asking questions but i mean this idea of it, it, i mean do you find it do you find it sometimes burdensome though to to find all the to kind of juggle all these different expectations you know telling your own stories while at the same time writing against depictions you know that are so problematic is it hard to find your own way through that uh, i recently what happened is i met a folk uh, i met a man and he saw my film and he was just uh, i won't say but yeah it, it it's a problem maybe from you know, the way he is taught how, how tribal should be actually and maybe and he was like uh, your film needs more uh, what we say a kind of uh, uh, tribal thing you know the way your, your tribal people should dress up and things like that and yeah it was a kind of you know challenge for me actually when people i meet people like your your film is not tribal enough uh, your people are still wearing you know full pant pants and shirts and all so you should be wearing you should have some oh no leaf uh, hat or maybe clothes made from leaf and you have you should carry bows and arrows kind of thing yeah i i i kind of yeah, meet those kind of people also but i also try to understand the way you know their their family or their generation or they had must have told uh, how uh, unaware they must be i feel pity for them actually but uh, i also uh, got to know how tribal actually uh, portrayed and also portrayed and how they are looked up uh, when i went uh, to fti to learn cinema and many people from there when they came to know you know he, he is an adivasi or tribal it was an 
kind of you know they've never seen any tribal maybe it was the first time somewhere you know a tribal uh, is there and their notion of tribal is maybe poor or maybe i got uh, this uh, uh, skin tone also it, it must be much darker kind of and recently there was an interesting thing uh, there was a casting guy for a film and he called me up and he told me he asked me that do you have any contacts for uh, actors to be we, we can shoot in jharkhand it's a tribal film and we need some tribals and i told him that yeah i have a actor i constantly collaborate with him and i sent him this photo and he replied me back that no the color tone is not matching so i told what what happened what about the color tone he said no i want someone you know more darker kind of thing what what, what but i i can, you can you can come around here you can find you know, tribal you know with different <laughs> uh, you know not just dark tones you can also find fairer person also but for him he was you know adam and no it is for our casting and we my director has told me that you know i need so this, this this nature of you know uh tribal people so these kind of things yeah i find it uh, yeah we 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 find it everywhere but mm. yeah but through my filmmaking what i try to do is at least it's not my what we see it's not uh, intentional, intentional actually that i i show my tribal people without any you know uh, you know uh, what we say leaf hat or maybe wearing uh, carrying bows and arrows because i see my tribal people no you know i just as a common people you know wearing common clothes uh, so it's not uh, what we say it's not uh, intentionally for me to you know kind of show my people uh, not as a you know so called tribal tribal type yeah mm. for, for me it was quite normal because i see my people as they are you know completely normal without you know those kind of uh, what we say the notion we carry for you know tribal look and clothes they should be wearing uh, yeah yeah mm. yeah i think that comes across in your in your films because even though of course i don't know the characters that you portray but they they don't come across as other or exoticized that uh, they, they just come across as people with different cultural heritage i think um my time is up for a while <laughs> I think it's is it your turn Marina to ask answer. Yes. Ask. <laughs> it's my turn. Also Sarah you, you you've spoken about storytelling already quite a bit so I think my question fits quite nicely. I want to ask about your film Remains. It's the second short film uh, that can be viewed as part of the New Art Exchange recording which is on YouTube. So I wanted to ask about this film and the portrayal of the foreign woman in it. I think she she might be a journalist, right? And she doesn't hear or try to understand the story that is being told in this film, but merely considers the views, the ruins as being of importance. So I wondered if this is something that you have faced a lot from I don't know, from foreigners or from people who are not adivasi not from that area a refusal to listen or maybe a lack of interest in in the stories that are being told or maybe even some superficial interest so could you talk about this a little bit more uh, <clears throat> yeah the remains actually uh, uh, was from the real uh, happening which uh when i was in college uh, there was a, an australian journalist who was here and she was here to cover a story about santhali uh, jatra and cinema so what happened is i uh, i was there with her as a translator so i used to go along with her every time everywhere and once one hap- what happened it happened both to us actually uh, she is a kind lady i would she helped me a lot we are still in contact so the, what happened is we were so much into you know collecting stories at at, at one point happened is uh, the people got to know that we are here to collect stories and they you know actually started telling us stories stories and stories and it was tough for us actually you know to uh, get to know what was 
actually true and what was uh, actually they were making up because they have been interviewed so many times that they actually know that these people are here just for stories and maybe they are not emotionally you know uh, connected to us and this happens actually many times where you are actually too much into this gathering things uh, gathering stories gathering uh, uh, issue based stories and everything you tend to you know normalize you know stories and for you what matters more much more than emotion and what happened to them is your story and how you collecting the stories so it happened uh, we went to a place where uh, the people have been displaced uh, by this dam construction of dam and we just had ruins and there were people telling stories about you know how what happened and what things and yeah it was kind of you know later on well while you know seeing those footages what we shot i actually got to know that how you know people uh, the victims of those you know again displacement and because it's not just displacement when people in a community or a village displaced there is a whole lot of things you are disconnected with actually your place your upbringing your history your stories uh, there are also stories when the the the, the they were forced to leave uh, you know the villages the families actually got you know separated and there there, there are too many things to show economic and uh things uh, uh as a reaction happened to them and when i when 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 went back as a translator i was translating them i realized realized how you know uh, inhuman it was to actually go and make somebody an individual a living living being to just mere stories for a newspaper or a, or a tv news maybe or tv Uh, uh making him just an what we say just an story you know how an individual just become a story without being you know so it was kind of a uh, very uh what we say uh ruthless actually it was for me also and for them also and because i was trying to understand uh how they were reacting to us and what were the reason and also i was also thinking about what they must be thinking you know what their thoughts about you know us we coming to them and you know asking what happened to them and you know so these all things were actually yeah and yeah we we like you said that foreigners she is actually a foreigner but we both were actually foreigner for those people who were there you know the kind of interaction we are doing you know we we were too much into you know collecting stories and somehow even if the me being from the same community i was like you know i distanced myself uh, uh, at that time when i was collecting stories and it was quite uh, actually bad for actually them you know they also being they are also understanding that yeah we are just stories now for somebody because we are left with nothing now no house we have been you know put to some other place to just survive yeah yeah you know um if i can say something about this um now i mean this actually touches upon a huge issue um that has been you know going on i mean for ages and in different contexts as well um this focus on getting a story or so you know from uh somebody else i mean it can be a writer it can be a journalist it can be um anyone who is genuinely probably genuinely you know interested in a culture that is completely different from the culture they come from but at the same time there is such a focus on getting a particular story no so this i mean we can even think of of the uh, you know slave narratives i mean former slave narratives or uh, indentureship narratives and then now you know the refugees uh, narratives that is this focus on um approaching you know coming as close as possible but yet having a certain view in fact of the story they want to get so you know you put it you put it into into words in a in a very you know specific way and uh, also in, that, and that was yeah. you know so interesting but i think you have yeah. you have a, a very interesting way of getting out of this 
but you know yeah. if you yeah please no what 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 was you see very much similar now is this also uh, how the festival runs actually film festivals runs actually the thing happens in film festival is uh, you send your film or maybe you know certain kind of uh, the festival has a certain kind of audience viewers to you know attach to them no so that's a problem with these festivals also when you know yeah. you try to appease those kind of audience exactly. and you being not honest to your storytelling or what you want to say you just to appease uh, the jury or maybe yes. Uh, yes. the funders or maybe what we say yeah. the viewers you yes. try to you know bend your stories or maybe mm. you tell your story in a certain way that your story is appreciated by a certain uh, class or certain group of people so this was completely happening when i was seeing there the, 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 uh, they actually know how to tell their stories to whom and who are the people how they are cons- you know mm. in what stories will they be cons- interested mm. uh, they knowing me from that i came from the same community they try they were telling me different stories and they the other girl you know the, the australian girl, friend of mine who was there they were telling her, her some different stories and it was accordingly you know they were they have this they have built this thing that uh, uh, how uh, different stories to be told to different cultures so that can they can be you know appreciated or maybe liked by them so mm. i i find this very similar to how these uh, festivals and festivals works actually yes uh, but it goes beyond the the mere festivals as well i mean <laughs> it's it, uh, really a, a, a an acute you know question uh, that has to do with the relationship you have with you know your audience and and uh, what kind of impact it can have on um you the, the ways in fact you are producing the art you want to produce and In fact I think you have a very particular very unique way of getting out of this. Uh it's the way you use photography and sound. As if it was a way of getting away you know getting out of those prescribed narratives, prescribed stories, stories that are expected from you. and um the way you use you know sound uh is is very unique in all of your films uh photography as well i mean of course and um it's a very immersive i mean particularly with sound it's a very immersive uh experience and i would like you to uh you know tell us a bit more about the uh the the technical experience that you uh technical and political and um ethical um as well experience that you that you have with the production of that particular sound uh and the use of photography i mean how do you work on it um do you work with sound it's almost as if in fact you were working with sound first um instead of story or instead of image i don't know it's it's a uh, you know very personal reaction but I, w- i would like you to you know speak to us a little bit about this well uh, from the very start you know when i started uh, film making my journey i actually you know come from this documentary background actually so my you know kind of image making is not that glossy you know full of uh, uh, lights and all to i is also sometimes feel that when you are telling a story about a man maybe uh uh when 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 when, when you can say there's a person standing in front of you who is completely you know it's kind of actually uh, ethically not correct to you know forcefully make him beautifully beautiful and you know throwing lights and everything so that he can look compelling on the screen i don't i i actually i don't belong to that background also and also that kind of you know glossy images is that actually uh, i think it's ethically bad for you know uh, uh, a man i'm telling a story about maybe uh, uh, i can say a man who is fighting for you know uh, 
a piece of land he owns and it is being uh, robbed by a powerful person and this is ethically wrong for me i think is to you know put lights on him and you know make him something you know out of this world kind of thing so and also because the history of how the port this romanticism and uh, how the uh, what we say the the, the tribal uh, people were photographed like i can say or maybe with all the ornaments and all the things you know decorative things and how uh, the image making was actually you know processed and you know, and it was kind of uh, uh, also some kind of uh, what we say it was pre before coming to fti also i i had this idea that i wouldn't be you know kind of making uh, those glossy images without any feeling i think too much of this things beautification also robs a uh, uh, emotion from somebody's face also i don't think anything is left from if 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 you see a face a uh, kind of a, a landscape and you put too many li- lights and decorative things i don't think there is any emotion left yeah but you know, sound is very different that. sound yeah sound for sound i have this you know very uh, the people i have worked with the sound design person i have worked with uh, i keep experiment with the experiment because even for sound i tell you it's very new for me and i don't know uh, new as in people you know it's easy for us to you know just carry a camera and click and capturing uh, images are quite uh, uh it's 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 not a big deal for anybody but for sound when i entered into sound and you know kind of uh, uh studied it and how this uh, uh i was ta- i was I used to talk about uh, sound and how sensory you know effect it is it, it has on our senses and what kind of uh, you know sounds have this uh, ability to kind of heal somebody i have this notion of i used to read too much about you know sound music healing and all i i also believe that there are certain kinds of sound that can heal and also yeah it's, it's scientifically i have it's, it's truth also and uh, i was i will start with uh, when you see my film the those sounds are not actually the the images and the sounds are completely different we'll see the images being not too glossy not too stylish but the sound you can see is different it's not purely natural also but yeah it kinds of you know uh it gives a sense of uh, you know uh magic a dream like thing mm-hmm. and maybe and also we can say the incapability of my me uh not being able to you know tell my show my face my subject's face beautifully i try to you know put sounds on them so that it can be a kind of uh, whatever emotion maybe i am not capturing with images i used to you know do experiment with my sound and in many instances also i i i when i work with my sound design i we used to experiment things like uh, uh half of the layers will be complete you know normal uh, sound recorded things uh, which we captured in our village in forest and all and half will be you know synth and created uh, so that it have this special kind of effect when you're viewing viewing this uh, uh, my film actually okay thank you mm. it's, 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 i say it's completely you know uh uh you know you you will agree on that that the face the 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 way i am capturing the images is completely you know uh you non diegetic kind of uh, sound i use uh, mm-hmm. along with uh, the, the natural sound also and uh, i can say from uh, the remains you or what happened was we used lots of things like in the last shot when there is this shadow of a girl crossing so th- these were some flutes we were playing and all we will try to experiment things maybe uh, how we can you know carry our you know, story better mm-hmm. 
So I think I'm going to completely change the subject now and ask you about social activism. I would like to ask you um, whether and to what extent you see your filmmaking as a form of social activism. Well, it all started, you know, the way I, you know, again, see the way, the, the way I entered into cinema. For me, uh, glamour, glamour was not the thing that I entered cinema, you know. Uh, I, I never thought of going to Bollywood and maybe working on some big budget film. And the, I entered into cinema through documentaries, we, we working with uh, uh, journalists, uh, activists. There were two filmmakers. I used to assist them very regularly, Biju and Meghnath. And then they were into Meghnath, my uh, Guru was actually a social worker before entering to cinema and he entered cinema uh, when he was 50s somewhere. So, you know, the kind of people I uh, got to meet were people who are actually, you know, uh, they didn't make uh, cinema to, you know, actually earn money. It was uh, like, you know, somebody uh, who's got everything to do, everything, they've got everything, you know, but there is still something they were la lacking, you know, they wanted something. Uh, then, 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 yeah, they started making films. So I, I was with those kind of people who were not uh, there to just earn money or maybe uh, earn uh, to run the family through this uh, filmmaking thing. So they were connect completely people uh, talking uh, about uh, society and how uh, there is injustice and in what they can do and how you know we can contribute as a me uh, as a filmmaker how can we contribute to those people fighting and whatever things as an introduction you gave me they were all completely from you know i got it from them so uh, starting from there when i enter into cinema also uh my purpose was not to earn uh, you know i was just it, it's okay for just you know give me earnings just to uh, you know but yeah social activism yeah i got a forgot this to a question as in social activism yeah what was this i just i just asked to what extent you see your filmmaking as a form of social activism yeah 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 so for me yeah the way i, I entered into cinema and still uh, I think uh, as a first uh, few first filmmakers from my community, I think it's our responsibility to actually, you know, voice out, uh, you know, uh, the problems, uh, the issue faced uh, by your community. And it's, it's just a it's an responsibility for me, actually. And yeah, just actually, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, coming from my upbringing and my whole journey, you know, uh, where it comes from. So I don't think is a, it's an uh, what we say it's an uh, kind of uh, uh, intentional thing. I think it's come naturally. I think I can, I, it's, it, I find it as a duty for me. You no, know, uh, being in this privileged uh, place, uh, coming from a prestigious uh, film school, I think it's an uh, uh, duty for me to actually go back to my place and voice out my people and whatever things they are not heard or maybe you know uh, be that voice actually yeah. so the things happening is at the present situation you know uh, uh, yeah in present situation we as a tribal population we are facing too many things so people things changing around you know uh cultural uh what we say a kind of attack from you know different communities also uh there are issues uh, you know like uh, uh extremism and you know all these things we have we happening uh, in past few years actually and yeah it was quite uh, and we we don't have too many people who are in this uh, media you know so I think, yeah, it is important as a duty also to come forward and you know be a voice to your people. 
Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think we all have, we could go on asking you questions and questions, but I feel like it's, it's probably also a good time to open it up to the floor and ask others to, you know, to ask a question. As I said, you know, I, mean, I, I still have a few, <laughs> I have endless questions, but you know, this is probably not the last time I get a chance to have a chat with Seral. Ah, Purna is putting his hand up. Go on then. <laughs> Hi, Seral. Nice to meet you. Hi, Purna. Yeah, nice to meet you again. Uh, it's a kind of follow-up question, what you already said and what uh, Marina asked. You know, uh, recently the Jharkhand chief minister, he said that, uh, you know, we are not Hindus, basically. And uh, there is a movement that has been going on for a long time now um, for a separate religious identity, Sarna religious identity. And the word Hindu itself is, as you know, it's it's a colonial invention. When the col British colonials that wanted to take the census, those who are not Muslims or Christians or Parsis, they're kind of amorphously clubbed together as Hindus. So it's it's that's how the word kind of came around and became famous. So, and I suppose your films, all your films are kind of, they're trying to make a point an autonomous uh, Adivasi, trying to establish an autonomous uh, Adivasi identity. So I was wondering how do you kind of locate yourself uh, in this debate, in this cultural and political debate? Uh, as a as a conscious um, Adivasi filmmaker, thank you. Yeah, Puna, thank you for you know this wonderful question. Actually, I was wondering who will be the better person to ask. This is a very what we say an important uh, thing going on now in uh, that all the tribal areas now, <clears throat> and also uh, like we discussed last time that we now have a. Uh, tribal uh, head of the state now and it has been a long what we say uh, kind of uh, uh, effort from our activists and uh, uh, people to you know kind of bring this uh, sarna uh, code of religion kind of and these see i what what happens is uh, I can tell you one thing that we, uh, uh, as a tribal, actually, uh, if you uh, think about, uh, uh, we have this festival thing here now. This is a festival season here, but uh, it's not a defined thing that you know, just like an institutional uh, religion we have all over world. There is somebody who will be telling you and what to do next and when is your next thing, when to celebrate your. Uh, you know the uh, how to celebrate and why to celebrate and kind of things uh, like baha in our village is we is, we are starting it today tomorrow and day after tomorrow but for other village it will be completely different and they their work uh, worshiping and their uh, you know a belief system will be you know kind of similar but they can have this thing it's very open to everybody how you can you, you should you know uh, have your faith and how you should celebrate it. It's nothing, there's no boundary as such as a religion, no? So thing happened is I'm, I'm very proud of this, that we don't have this uh, borders to how to, you know, be spiritually connected to nature or maybe God. And there's no one to tell us and it's completely individual you know, at this point. And this is beauty, I think that how, you know, there is nobody to govern this, and it is completely on yourself to how you are going to, you know, kind of uh, look into your life, your philosophy, and how things are going to actually work out for you. So these, uh, what happened is, uh, for last maybe a uh, hundred years, maybe what happens is there has been constant uh, uh, religious uh, kind of. Uh, uh, pressure to you know to give yourself some identity to who you are actually and there was this, uh, this census uh, before independence uh, the tribal were actually uh, you know they were counted as tribal or maybe animist or something like that but after independence what happened is you it was completely different than schedule uh, there was no uh, termed as if uh, was a Sant uh, adivasis or tribe there's nothing like that and seeing this uh, you know you can say kind of attack from every cultures you know the the, the uh, they were also you know 
uh, Christian conversion for, happening from one side, there is Hinduism coming from one side, and you kind of uh, people, uh, you know, uh, who are not converted or maybe they have this uh, uh, religion which is completely up to them. It, it was kind of an attack for them, you know, too many forces coming into these things. And now at present time, what happened, what forced, I think, the chief, uh, the chief minister of Jhagan to say this thing is uh, politically, you know, how religion is used. We all know this, how it is yeah. used, actually. So when you, uh, the, the, the big population of, uh, you know, tribal, when you convert them into this, you know, uh, what we say, Hinduism fold, you know, so you have this whole kind of, uh, uh, you also get this majority thing that you, they also claim that, yeah, you are also from the Sanatan Dharma and also kind of all those brainwashing and all, yeah, yeah it was happening from past also and now we also actually get to know what is happening and how politically it's done. So uh, this way it is, yeah. And what interestingly happens is uh, when you are converted to Christian, no, the, you have this, uh, what we say, this rituals you do that you are tribal. But I can tell you from my experience in my areas, we, we are not Christian, uh, what we converted. But I tell you one thing, we are somewhere into this Hindu fold. My mm -hmm. father's name is Mohan Chandra Muru. Mohan is a, uh, what we say, is a Hindu name for Lord Krishna. But when I ask him, Papa, what happened? Who named you Mohan? I, no, I don't know who named it. And it was maybe, you know, kind of, they were unknowingly, you know, getting into this fold uh, to, you know, because you, you are surrounded with people, Bengali cultures mostly. And you the kind of, you know, go into that. And these also have this certain, you know, it's not just about naming. And it's also had this uh, tendency of, you know, uh, taking things from them, from the uh, Hindu cultures and not knowing that you are also losing yours. See, I, what I see is uh, when two communities are living together, there are, there will be, you know, cross things, method, you will be taking, both sides will be taking different things. But, but here what is happening is, we uh, as an we had this inferiority complex within us no so whatever things we have and we if we don't know culturally and we are not proud of a culture then we tend to take those things but uh, you know in a certain inferiority complex that no what i have is not bad thing i have to take from different cultures because they are in superior than me mm. so all those things now so these things like um, we are not Hindu and Hindu, all those things. It's not, it's not just a one day thing. It, it has been, you know, it, it, it is demanded from too long how uh, religion can and is uh, uh, manipulated by the power and how you should actually, the people who are not converted. Uh, now we have this terminology, uh, this new religion kind of sarna uh, under which we all tribal are trying to, you know, negotiate ourselves that we are, because it's still difficult from uh, a tribal from MP will not uh, easily, you know, he, he, he calls himself something else from a, he calls himself uh, Adi Dharm, his religion Adi Dharm or something like that. But now it's in political, you know, we, we are trying to come under a umbrella where we will be, you know, kind of all the tribals will be calling ourselves from this tribe or this religion kind of and that is sarna which is now we we are, we are planning yeah but that is also you know a tricky thing to this i i i actually am you know hopeful this wouldn't be happening but i see things like there will be a priest or a dharam guru who will be preaching us what to do what not <laughs> to do how should you celebrate your uh, festival and who should you pray you know you know, kind of freedom we i have now you know there can be there is a chance you no know, when there is a religion you know there can be an institution there will be an institution where somebody will tell you how to pray to god mm -hmm. how to do your daily works when to pray when not to pray what to eat what not to eat for us for our tribal people now at least i can tell you it's completely on 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 us if we eat beef if we eat mutton if we eat chicken it's completely maybe I, there is somebody uh, in my village who doesn't eat pork maybe it's mm -hmm. completely fine for me also and maybe it's completely fine for him also that I, uh, I eat pork also so these kind of things the flexible you know the freedom things you know which uh, is very easy for us to 
easily accept somebody who is from different who 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 may be you know his approach to philosophy or maybe his spiritual connection to his uh, what we say maranguru or god may be different and it can be different and it you know it's accept- acceptable for me but there mm-hmm. is a this is also a trick man you know when there is an institution you you prepare an institution like and call it a religion and there may be someone who will be you know a dharm guru type something or a priest and he will be preaching you then that is a risk also yeah yes <laughs> yes thank you very much for addressing it thank you yeah oh thanks for not asking a question and alan janji has his hand up Alan, who is also a doctoral candidate at, at Nottingham Trent University and also a documentary filmmaker. Hi, uh, thank you, Nicole. Um, hi, Sarah. Um, thank you so much for the links to your film. Uh, I watched them this morning, uh, quite interesting indeed. And um, coming from a very um, practical filmmaking background, I've got just a few questions on your filmmaking practice, but then I've got a major question on voices. So, I mean, uh, the first question is more to do with the aesthetics really you know um why did you choose to do a one take because that is not easy you know i've tried it and even if it's just a five minute thing it's it's not easy at all and then also the second question is um why the the creative choice to go monochrome aspect you know black and white so that's those are the first two questions i don't know if you want to answer those ones and then we come to voices uh so so the voice question you can repeat me what what was the question no, uh, i haven't asked the voice question yet okay okay yeah. you see just about the long take the single yeah. take and, and you say the, mo- the monochrome yes yeah and the, and the monochrome thing yeah uh, actually what happened is this film this uh, the short film was completely shot inside a studio it was not a uh, so there were things that we couldn't this is technical thing this, this is nothing to do with aesthetic actually i can tell you so this was technical things that we you know when you don't have this capability of controlling colors no yeah, so it is quite possible to actually uh, control you know uh, uh, what we say kind of black and white and shades no so it was an exercise for us also we were, we were trying to experiment also you know how to deal with uh, black and whites and its uh, uh, tones you know? and also because practically uh, we were not ready to actually you know uh, you know control colors because uh, when film is in color you have too many things too many colors you cannot control maybe so it was a challenge for us and as also it was an experimental thing though we wanted to do something in monochrome let's see you no know, once you and you you are also practicing filmmakers and it is a thing that when you master this black and white things and how to you know kind of control those tones you will be easy it will be easy for you to you know manage things in color also yeah and about uh, the long take things I, i as in film school uh, you have this you know uh, this notion of you know doing things like masters <laughs> so jan sho tagovsky yeah there was a kind of uh, what we say uh, uh, what we say uh, we also have this uh, uh, kind of uh, you can also see when when you see the any credit there is also this uh, uh, credit uh, name editor is named there because i sat with my editor also though we didn't have this cut points in my film but we uh, had this thing that when we are uh, when you are uh, making a frame you also had when you traveling it you also jumping to next shot also but you are doing it in a or we kind of uh, uh, in a flow that uh, it gives you some kind of rhythm also and also there is a movement going on so i thought of you know kind of uh, when when there is a uh, cut or something like that you're jumping to one kind of the, so i had this uh, whole chain to where it is going to start and where it is going to end so it it was kind of a what we say uh uh, uh, uh fluidity to you know when you see something no Well, it's this is traveling yeah so it was also a kind of uh, what we say it was we were young 
we were trying to experiment we were too much no uh, we saw too much talk of ki jaan shur and all we tried to do something you know and also we like this thing when even after uh, this remains in other two films also we'll see uh, there were cuts but the shots were yeah for for both the films you will see the shots are too long actually not uh, i don't tend to cut it you know i try to keep it with uh, you know the, the the harmony and let the actors uh, feel it and you know the, the audience also feel and maybe slowly move my camera around so it was kind of you know an experiment thing for us also and we were trying to understand the medium also and also this fluidity thing which also works and yeah i agree with that yeah um I, 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 it, and the one take i think it worked very well uh, th- thanks for that um i'll try that on my next film and uh, now on the voices because at the moment i'm doing my documentary on voices for refugees and i love the way that uh, uh, i think it was judith who actually intimated uh, the question of voices that i want to find out how do you navigate if the voices that you're recording you know if the stories that are being told go against what is mainly accepted you know they, if it goes against the mainstream media narrative because you talked about uh, you know trying to appease an audience or you talked about casting directors telling you what to do you know so how do you navigate you know that quite rough terrain whereby you need to tell your story and you want it to be heard outside uh these films which uh, were actually on the platform which you sh- saw uh i was completely free from this uh, media or marketing things that i will not be judged or maybe i was not in a pressure that uh, uh, the people will be liking or disliking it so that way it helped me a lot in that way because i didn't have this pressure and yeah to a certain extent you also have to you know uh, hear from inside also uh, for us and you also i believe it's and this film making is a very you know personal thing you know unless and until you are content or you have this emotional thing coming out, out from inside uh, you will you know try on doing things and appeasing others but down somewhere you will think that no this is not i actually wanted to do yeah and 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 what happened uh, for me actually apart from me not being judged but uh, with uh, i was not worried about people judging me or people liking or disliking i was completely free from that because i'm not going to sell my film outside uh, it was already funded and I, i i was getting my due so i was not uh, you know doing that part but but other than that i was thinking that uh, i had this uh, you know uh, before I, this man i'm telling you about the uh, uh third film which i think you have not seen it's not open the platform i used to you know uh actually uh, what we say was too much into my community matlab uh uh can we see something like uh, uh i actually you know before you know coming in learning this other languages and you know, i was uh, completely you know my mother tongue is not uh, hindi or english something it's santali so my upbringing was completely on santali with santali speaking people and uh, the kind of people i was surrounded i would like the second film the rava i was used to tell those films were actually you know they i wrote it after hearing uh, my aunty singing that song so you kind of you know all my so- stories and all they actually are coming from some real events happening and uh, i can actually say that i am a collaborator to whatever stories i have told but half the stories which are told which i am showing a told my, my you know my elder my auntie my grandfather or somewhere some someone in my village so that kind you know, you you get this sense of you know uh, collaborative things and the voice in you know, natural comes out from maybe you, you know it 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 sense you can sense it you know you can sense the honesty and from where it is coming actually
Yeah. I mean, so uh, it, was long... part, it was partly, it was partly, you can say, uh, conscious and partly it came naturally also. Yeah, well, I just want to say, you know, as, um, I feel that as long as you're being authentic, I think that is brilliant. Um, I, like, like I said, you know, uh, sometimes in my filmmaking, I always have these problems of people trying to provide me a story that they think I want instead of them being authentic. So it yeah. is, you know, and in documentary, it's so difficult because there are many cases whereby I have to tell my story first for someone to believe me and to be honest with me. So I want to find out if you have the kind of, the, you know, the, the, the same challenges as well. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. These things are quite common, I think, with you also, with me also. Because ultimately, when you're going to uh, ask money for your film or maybe you want to sell them, have this uh, preconceived notion of how your film should look and what your stories are. And, and you have to actually, you know, you actually have to smart, you have to, we have to be extra smart to convince our producers or maybe, you know, the people who are backing us to completely believe on us and our ideas of what we are doing and how it should go actually. And it's a, it's a, it's an, you know, it's also depends on, you no, know, also you can say the producers who are very successful, you can see there has always been an, uh, what we say, a kind of, uh, uh, what we say, um, uh, freedom they gave to the filmmakers and gave maybe a trust they, they have on the filmmakers to what kind of, you know, uh, film they want to show actually and I think initially it, it is for you know people who are trying to make films now and we are comparatively new to you know others it can be a challenge for us now yeah to convince our producers or maybe back, who, people who are backing us how to deal with them but I think once you have made a point and once you have you know kind of made a uh, position for you yourself and, you know, even the producers who they knew that he, he is coming from a certain background and a certain framework and certain you know, kind of uh, body of work he has done. So they have this idea of what is going to be, you know, the final product, actually. I think uh, yeah, that kind is quite naturally that we have to deal with these things and do it smartly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for answering those questions and thanks Alan for being here and asking those wonderful questions. I think we have one more hand up and I think we need to sort of slowly wrap up because I know it's just being asked questions for over an hour is quite it's quite a, it's quite a tough, tough task. So please, you know, Kade Tudu, please, the floor is yours. Uh, Johar, to everybody. Myself, Kade Tudu from Hyderabad, Jhark uh, India. Uh, Seralji, uh, my question is that uh, you have done a wonderful job. I think uh, from our community, it is the only you, you only represent uh, uh, our community to show the world that what we have the problem and uh, what we are still we are facing the problem. But my question is that is there any program for uplifting the society? regarding education and what is still we have got the Jharkhand states is still uh, though we we should have uh, uplift the uh, our society but uh, till now what we have expected before uh, uh, separating the states uh, i think uh, it has not been reached so in this regard uh, have you any plan to produce uh, such uh, documentary that in uh, which uh, which will helpful to our society and not with our, our society in. Hello. In... Hello. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In other uh, world also uh, that uh, where uh, uh, buses are there. So is there any program to for them also? To, you know, mm. you, they are still facing some problem like the South Africa, the Indo Kenya, all these things. Uh, is there any upcoming uh, program? Is there or is there any, you have uh, the documentary you have produced? Uh, is that uh, it is funded by you? You own 
on your own or by some other people to so uh, to making this uh, film yeah yeah thank you yeah kadi uh, to do, thank you for asking this question yeah and yeah i i understand your concern no because we got the separate state separate tribal state uh, almost 20 years back and we still uh, you know struggling to you know kind of uh, uh, the dreams we had before the separation of the state as a tribal state we we stri- still you know uh, lagging i understand this concern of yours yeah uh well as a, i can tell you as a filmmaker uh, my contribution is you know how much i am contributing culturally and maybe to make uh, uh, what we say like uh, it's not an organized thing what i'm doing but what i have uh, you know people with me the youngsters are with me i think uh, one of them is mansing is here with with me he's a junior and studying uh, media studies and i have people like him uh, we have this group to how we can you know, actually you know expand this media literacy in among our tribesmen you know and how we can bring more people to this media thing so that we matlab like you said that you are the only people i i don't think i'm the only people we have people also who are not maybe you no know, uh, who are just starting off uh, but uh, uh, what we are trying to do is make a community kind of thing where we you know tribal people can come along and share our experience uh, like if uh, i am coming from a you know kind of a, a college a media institution i have this responsibility that i also you know kind of uh, 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 will lead my youngsters to this field of filmmaking or maybe uh, at least this uh, journalism or something like that so i have this uh, group of people my juniors who are very you know uh, talented and they find it uh, find it prob- find it as a they see me as a role model to what i'm doing now so i think that way it's my my contribution to as a filmmaker to how i'm creating you know media person in my community and also uh, what we say about uh, like you said uh, what our plans are about the development things and all i can see here uh, some three four people now uh, in the uh, group now and we like i said it's not an organized sector but we have a group where we like uh, in in a village we before this pandemic thing what happened is we used to run uh, a school with uh, 10 15 youngsters and we used to run a school for kids who were not able to go to school that time and uh, we also had this uh, uh, collaboration with accelerate jamshedpur this management school and we used to teach them online through mobiles uh, and uh, did the schooling but this also is didn't go for a long a long period because the second wave was very you know kind of the, we were trying to set up with this again and we were going to start it again and also yeah there are plans uh, like in agriculture field also we're trying to you know uh, people we have a group of people working in delhi and some other state also we have this group and we kind of meet uh, every week and we can discuss how to do that and we have this plan of uh, maybe may or june we'll be traveling to gujarat state where you know the our tribal people have are uh, you know have, have uh, are much more developed you know and much more financially strong and do it they're doing just be, uh, you know uh, with the help of agriculture and all we trying to actually collaborate collaborate with people and other people from other part of india and how they are managing things and yeah we have we have people in this group also like sankar madi and man singh and other people also yeah so things are happening but uh, there are too many things happening kade ji so you you actually you from hyderabad you must know someone from uh, delhi also uh, mangal and and sankar you can you should connect with sankar madi who is in group now also so we, we we things are happening yeah slowly happening but they are happening hopefully you know we will get to see positive things maybe in two three years after this Okay thank you
you can ask me about area specific you can ask me in agriculture what you doing i can tell you agri in agriculture we are going to uh, a different state uh, to gujarat uh, next may june and that is the people from there uh, gujarat will be coming to our village and our people from our village will be going and we kind of uh, you know uh, exchange they will be have they will have to the techniques of agriculture and how it is going to help and how to actually you know uh monetize things and uh, bring money to you know villages here and help financially here. yeah yeah thank you thank you and um, for asking the question as well and, and for, for attending that that's lovely um so i think um we are sort of now well over our time so i think <laughs> we'll try and wrap it up but at the same time we still would like to talk a little bit about your current projects your upcoming projects just very briefly as a sort of plug so what can uh, you yeah the thing is last september i will be repeating the same thing because i haven't commit, completed all those works <laughs> so there are two projects actually i'm doing for this uh, tribal research institute uh, that is in rachi uh, it's an uh, research on um, uh, rituals uh, on birth uh, marriage and death for two primitive tribes uh, asur and malpahariya uh one feature and documentary on the history of santhali cinema and how the digital change which came uh, you know actually helped in film making so maybe how 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 it affected the overall storytelling uh, of the santhali people and uh, there is an ongoing project that has been is long from they do doing it from long about this uh, megalith of uh, jharkhan and you know stories written on the stones uh mapathal gadi movement and all those things and they are you know all those are interconnected still haven't named all those things yeah but yeah things are slowly doing getting and there is a fiction film i was you know i was trying to i last uh, september we were talking i told you about maybe i'll complete this year i'm still skeptic i don't know what to do because i have too many things too many things to complete now and i'm just postponing you know my dates i've yet to start them so hopefully i'll start maybe after after because i have this commitments of completing commitment of completing all those projects now so yeah yeah i feel your pain <laughs> we're all in the same boat <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> so too many commitments but thank you so much you know i don't think there are any final questions but just yes you know <laughs> i want to applaud you for for had a, a clapping <laughs> clapping hand single symbol so thank you so much you know seral and we are very much looking forward to kind of <laughs> seeing you know where this goes because i'm, I'm sure uh, i personally can't wait to see those documentaries and what you have to say about those stones it's very intriguing and of course the the um the feature film that will also be very exciting so thank you so much and um all the very best thank you we look thank forward you. to thank the you. third conversation thank you so much yeah thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you bye bye bye